Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke and I'll be reading chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And this is what it says. And it came about that while he was on the way to Jerusalem that he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a certain village, there met him ten leprous men who stood at a distance. And they raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And it came about that as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but the nine were they? Were none found who turned back to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Pray with me. Lord, to be made well, to be made whole, it's an act of, of faith, trust in you. Lord, we know that, that faith, that trust, it's not only in you, it comes from you. Give us that strength, that power this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mark Twain, at the height of his career, was earning what then was an incredible sum of money, $5 a word, writing for Harper's Weekly. Well, some jokester wrote him a letter, said, Dear Mr. Twain, please find enclosed $5. Could you give me a good word? Mark Twain, on a single sheet of paper, wrote the word, thanks, and mailed it to the fellow. <laughs> well, thanks is a good word, and thanks is right at the heart of this lesson today. This parable that Jesus tells us, it tells us that Jesus and his disciples were between Samaria and Galilee. Well, that's just code for they were in the middle of the boondocks. They were in the middle of nowhere. Well, we know that because it says they were between Samaria and Galilee. But another way that we know that is that there were ten leprous men. That it's leprosy meant that they had to be out of the town. They had to be out of the village. They had to be out of their homes. They had to be away from the cities. And somehow they had found each other. Here they were together. And if anyone, if they saw anyone, the law required them not only to be out of their towns and cities and villages, but also to cover their mouths and shout, unclean, unclean. Well, these men not only shouted unclean, but they shouted to Jesus and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. In other words, don't you care? Well, the answer comes back quickly. Go show yourselves to the priest. And it tells us this morning that as they were going, they were cleansed. It wasn't immediately. It was on the journey along the way that they were cleansed. But one of them turned back. Now we have a story. One of them turned back to give thanks. And that's the one that was commended for his faith. Jesus said, your faith has made you well. It's that word of thanks, that word of gratitude 
That's the language of faith. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Lisa Truett Irby from Cleveland, Tennessee, tells a story about how she was teaching a little girl to read. And as she was teaching her to read, the little girl would stumble over some words, but Lisa would, would wait to see if, if she could, could figure out how to pronounce that word. And, <laughs> and when the little girl came to the words, thank you, she had never seen those words before. So she stopped right there. Lisa waited a little while, and then finally she said, thank. But the little girl didn't say anything. Again, she said the word, thank. But the little girl still didn't respond. A third time, she said, thank. And the little girl said, I am thanking, I am thanking. Well, <laughs> thanking and thinking aren't the same thing, no matter what your accent is. That thanks is not something that we just carry on the inside of us. It's an act. It's demonstrated. It's an act of faith. It's a demonstration of faith. It's what we, what we do. The Apostle Paul said, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. It's what we do is that act of thanks. It's that act of gratitude that's the language of the faith. It's not just thinking it or feeling it. And so the first thing that I want to talk about this morning is give thanks where you are. Give thanks where you are. Lisa Brethnock, in her book Simple Abundance, talks about a time in her life when she was angry, she was a perfectionist, she was a workaholic, and she compared herself to others around her. And at any point that she thought she was falling short, she was incredibly critical of herself. And she knew something had to change. Well, one day she began to write down all the things she was thankful for, page after page after page, 150 different things that she wrote down that she was thankful for. And everything didn't change all at once. But she knew she was knocking on the right door. So the next day, she, she wrote down five things that she was thankful for. And the next day, she wrote down five things she was thankful for. Again and again and again and again. Day in and day out. And that's when she said her life began to change. That the anger turned into to gratitude that the perfectionism turned into praise, and that the competitiveness turned into worship, that her life began to be changed right where she was, step by step, little by little. Gratitude, thanks, it's, it's the language of faith. Not just long ago, but for, for you and me as well. It's not enough just to, to think it or to feel it. It's an act of faith. It's a show of faith. It's a demonstration of faith. Give thanks where you are. And the second thing I want to talk about this morning is give thanks where you've been. My sister, many years ago, lived in Scotland for a year. Her husband was on a Fulbright scholarship, and the whole family lived in Scotland. My sister is very musical, and she would take her girls to the nursing home to, to sing. My sister would play piano, and her little girls would would sing songs to the, the, the people that were there. Sometimes they would sing along. <laughs> One day my sister said, after they'd sung a, a song or two, that a woman in the back of the room yelled out the word spam. Well, my sister didn't know what it meant, but the woman stood up and began coming toward her the whole time saying spam. You gave us spam. She looked at the, the nurse next to her, and the nurse just shrugged. Finally, the woman got up close and said, you're an American, you gave us spam. She had just found out that my sister was an American. That's when <laughs> the, the nurse said, oh, she lived during World War II when people were starving. It was a very hard time in Scotland, and it was the Americans who airdropped spam, the meat in a can, so the people could survive. She wanted to tell you thank you. Now, it wasn't that my sister needed to hear that word of thanks. The warm woman needed to say it. That word of thanks, it's what our soul thirsts for. 
The giving of thanks, not just the thinking of thanks. The demonstration of thanks, not just the thinking of thanks. Hebrews 2.18 says, For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. That Jesus knows what suffering is like. He knows what heartache is like, and he's able to come to the aid of those who are tempted to look at at those things that happened in the past. And rather than responding in resentment and anger, to respond in thanks. We can't change our past, but we can change the way that we look at it. And it's the Apostle Paul who knew what it was like to be beaten, who knew what it was like to be shipwrecked, who knew what it was like to be crushed with stones and imprisoned from prison, he writes in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's the risen Christ in, in you and me that can change the way we look at our past. Our past won't change, but the way we look at it certainly can. And it's gratitude, it's thanks. That's the language of faith. Jesus has the power we don't have to help us change the way we look at our past. It may be that you're in that place, that place where you look on your past as a time of regret, of resentment, of bitterness. The risen Christ has has power, power for you and for me that we might give thanks where we've been. Give thanks where you've been. Give thanks where you are. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is give thanks along the way. Barbara Scholes wrote in Christian Century an article about a time in her life when she had cancer. And she said it was that time in her life that she could identify most with these ten leprous men. This is what she said. She said, when chemotherapy causes your hair to fall out, rubs you of your energy and fills your mouth with canker sores, you begin to develop empathy with lepers. There's no hiding the fact that you are diseased. Your cancer walks into the room before you do, and people know better, still flinch, as they did before the lepers, who were made to live outside the community, who had to beg for survival. After Barbara was healed of her cancer, she said, At that point, she could identify with the 10th leper who returned with gratitude. She said, like the 10th leper, I never want to lose sight of the miracle of God's grace. Being grateful as I awaken to the gift each day is the key. That she's come to believe gratitude is the purest measure of one's character and spiritual condition. Gratitude, the purest measure of one's character and spiritual condition. Gratitude. Gratitude is the language of faith, the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. He gave his life on the cross for you and for me. He took all those things that would destroy us. It may be bitterness from our past. It may be resentment. It may be anger. It may be fear. He took it and he nailed it to the cross to take away its power once and for all. And when Jesus rose from the grave, he gave you and me power. Power over those things that would destroy us. Power to give thanks. Right where we are. To give thanks where we've been. And to give thanks all along the way. It may be you've not known this power in your life. And I want to pray with you now. Let's pray together. Jesus, you give strength we don't have. The strength of the risen Christ, your Holy Spirit here among us this day. Breathe that strength, that power on us. That even in the hard time, you give strength. And that we might practice the act, the demonstration of of thanks and gratitude we might walk closer to you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. 
Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.